So good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to this uh, season two episode for our Multiphysics channel. And in this episode, I will tackle the issues of food waste at households and how our research can help solve that issue. But it's not about me sharing our research. It's more about thinking this issue together and sharing some ideas on how you can also bring your research to your audience. So for that purpose, I will show how we use R to make an interactive application. So I hope by the end of the episode, you think of how you can also reduce your food waste at home and consider new ways of reaching out to your audience who can benefit by what you do. And perhaps you use R for that. But before diving to before dive, we dive in, into these topics, let me introduce myself a bit. So I'm your host today. My name is Kanaha. I'm a fresh graduate from EPFL, uh, where I got my master's in environmental engineering and sciences. Before that, I was at Georgia Institute of Technology in the States, and that's where I got my bachelor's also in environment, environment engineering. Now I'm here at Empa Sangaren as a research assistant in department 401 and uh, in the group uh, symbiosis simulating biological system group my colleague told me that i often say that's so sad but i would say i'm a rather happy person as you can see me here being smiley happy at the sangaran station two truth and one lie. so it also links to the topic of today when i get berries from stores from friends more thinking of raspberry and strawberries i will put them in the fridge i will keep them on the table i will just eat them all right away I also want you, to, want you to think what you would do when you get these berries and you can maybe tell me your answers after the presentation. And that links to the topic of today, food waste. So now it's not just about berries, but if you have these perishable products, fruits and vegetables, what would you do? You can of course eat at the purchase, but maybe you put it in the fridge first, you put it on the cellar if you have one, you have a fruit basket maybe and put it that on the table. Whatever you do, these products will go to your mouth or they become waste. And these waste are rather um, significant. And in Switzerland, household food waste accounts for almost 40% of avoidable food waste. And it is considered as the biggest source of food waste. But to avoid this food waste, what can we actually do? One way we propose today is to place these products in their optimal condition so that these products will stay fresh longer. What are these optimal conditions? How the quality of these products will change over time? We as a consumers don't really have a very little knowledge about it. On the other hand, we at EMPA do gather this information on how we should store these fruits and vegetables. In our group with scientists and engineers, we simulate how these perishable product changes its quality over time. We utilize sensor data such as temperature and humidity, and we use these sensor data as an input for this physics-based model. In a few episodes ago, my colleague Shandrima gave a very nice overview of how this physics model looks like and how it works, which is called Digital Twins. Uh, if you haven't seen it, please check it out. And as she nicely explained there, with these models, we get complementary insights, which we were not able to see otherwise, and some actionable metrics, such as uh, remaining shelf life that consumers can act on. So we do have this knowledge, but consumers don't. So we find there's this missing link here. So to solve these issues, we came up with this idea to to set up an easy to use mobile app so that consumers can have access to this knowledge and these tools. So in the rest of the episode, I want to show you this app we've created, so-called My Fruit Twin. And it's, I have to say it's still in the development phase, but I hope you get some insights. All right, so this app, I'm trying to bring it here. This app is created in R. So R is a programming language often used for statistical analysis and visualization. We are using R Shiny package and R Shiny mobile package to make it more interactive and has mobile, um, mobile app-like features. And this app, you can download it uh, using URL. So it's not the native app that you can usually download from App Store, but still you can download using URL. So that's quite nice. 
Okay, so I will just go through some features we have with this app. Uh, so since we've been talking about optimal condition, let's check what the optimal condition is for raspberries. And in this plot, it's showing uh, what, pen, what temperature on the x-axis, what humidity on y-axis these fruits likes to be. You can see this red square, which is quite tiny for raspberries. So raspberry has a quite limited um, optimal range that they like to be. And you can see this point, my storage point, which links to the sensor data. So in this case, the sensor, uh, I already linked to the sensor I have in my room. So it's more or less the room temperature, as you can see, it's 20 degree and 40%, and which is quite far from what optimal would look like. So this users can play around. Let's say you have um, more like a, a fridge condition. So let's say you have five degree and uh, a little bit higher uh, humidity. So then you will get closer to the condition the raspberry rice likes to be. You can play around with other products. Let's say you, can, you have cucumbers and cucumbers likes to be in the temperature between 10 degree and 12 degrees. So in this way, users can play around what kind of condition these fruits likes to be. And yeah, so that's one point we have. And, and I also want to show another feature. So this tells you what kind of storage condition these, um, these fruits are in. Well, basically, so idea is you place this sensor which monitor temperature and humidity in the, in the storage where you have those fruits or vegetables. So then you have some overview of how this temperature fluctuates, uh, humidity fluctuates over time. And let's say you plan to eat your product this day, you started to store a few days ago, and you can see the overview of how it fluctuates. And now it, we are selecting cucumbers, so let's see how this cucumber quality changes over time. So uh, this tells you how the quality decays uh, uh, in these few days We are under this such condition that we chose from this plot tab. And based on this input, now you have uh, four, almost 4.5 days left. So that's how uh, uh, consumers can play around with these features. And of course, this quality calculation is based on the, also based on the initial condition. So we provide a few options. You perhaps have a cucumber garden in your house. And then if that's the case, you will stay fresh a bit longer, as you can see now, Cucumbers are a little bit happier in this stage. Um, maybe you buy already on the sales, a little bit more damaged, and you can also see when it's more damaged, now you have less than three days left. So that gives you this remaining shelf life. Another feature we are working on is to link up more closely with the temperature that each users have. So now I have to manually update this temperature data and humidity data set. The idea is that in the future, we will link up this automatically with your uh, probably Bluetooth. And the good thing about this is that you can easily, uh, users can see how, how it links to their condition. So not just the already uh, inserted data. And then it's, you can do the same thing. Let's, let's say I got the berries here or cucumbers now, and you, day so then you can see how the storage condition changes over time and ideally this will link up back to the quality calculations it's not that, like that now but that's the idea we have one last feature i want to show is this shelf life um, plot oh. and here you can have an overview of what product you have so let's add the pepper and tomatoes and maybe purple as well and then here it, it has, you can have an overview of what product you have, what remaining shelf life these products have. And now these calculations are based on the, the sensor data we have. So I'm assuming that all the products are in the same storing condition. And, but yeah, so maybe not necessarily the case all the users have, but uh, we are working on this. And the idea is that with this information, they can, um, they can play around how the temperature impacts their, uh, their remaining shelf life and also remember what product they have in their, in their house. And of course, it's not that uh, if you put all the input, you will get the perfect remaining shelf life. It's more like how the consumers, of course, it's not like it will last 2.46 days exactly, but it's more the relative comparison and, and the consumer, depending on the 
temperature humidity differences, they can play around how these impact and they can find their own way to find the optimal conditions in their house. So that's all from the app. Um, before I go back to the presentation, I wanted to show a bit of how it looks on the script. So that's the R Studio I'm using to create this app, and that's the script I have for this app. Uh, unlike other uh, normal script, you don't import um, import packages here. You start you only the library that you need for the app. And Shiny app consists of mainly two components. First one is UI. Uh, if I can find it, yeah. So inside the Shiny app, you have UI. So that's where all the user interface goes. So what you will see and all the function, what function you want to have. And the next second component is server, which is, it's, uh, I hope I didn't skip, yeah. So the server component, that's how uh, you, what kind of calculation it goes behind. Uh, the interface and what this function actually does. So it's uh, there's a lot of things inside now, but I, I have put the link here. So that's also how I started learning R Shiny. So that's pro provided by R. It's a nice tutorial that you can have a look if you, that's your interest. All right, so now I'm going back to the presentation. So like I said, the idea of this app is that consumer can have a better, uh, find a better storing condition in their house and enhance insights on how their product uh, condition changes over time. And with this information, information in on their hand, they can uh, maintain the quality of their product longer. They can update the shopping list and don't over buy too many things and they can make a, some cooking plan. All these activities related to this app, you can reduce food waste at home. So that's the idea. So to sum up this episode, here are some highlights of today. Uh, let's remind ourselves how much food we waste at home and we can all think of how we can reduce the food waste. Um, second, your research can add more bodies to the audience. Um, so let's think of this way to uh, bridge between the research and the public. And for that purpose today, in this episode, we cover R Shiny. And I hope it was useful for you to know that R is not just a st statistical analysis tool, but it can also create um, web applications. With that said, that's more or less from my side. And just for your information, we have workshop tomorrow, computation on tools for data visualization. It's from one to three via Zoom. Uh, registration has been closed, unfortunately, but I'm the organizer together with, oh, together with my colleague. So you can send us email if that's your interest. Uh, we can, we also have a hands-on practice in R, so that would be something you're interested in. There's also another workshop simulation for metal additive manufacturing. It's an all-day event tomorrow. I'm not sure about the registration phase, but if that's your interest, you can check it out. Last but not least, if you have some ideas to share, some tips on in the simulations, please email Donato, and then you can take the post. You can also take a part in multi physics channel. With that said, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for your time, and I open the floor for questions.